Hello and welcome to another IGK tutorial. This one's a little bit of a quick one. I'm just going to gloss over most of the stuff. Um, basically, uh, it's to show you how to one way, of course, to make a tile scroll. It's not the most efficient way. It's not the fastest way. Um, it's it's basically just a quick and rough and ready way of doing it. Um, I did get it's a lot better this program, but it's an old program um, that I worked on a while back. Uh, and I'll just quickly run it and basically it's just a little editor oh hold on let me just bend it ah, yes it's using the joystick this so it can scroll around around a map it's all tile based um, I can plonk stuff down uh, next one there there we go like so, or not like so, because that's the wrong tiles entirely obviously can't find it, not that it matters, plonk plonk, plonk, plonk so you can sort of see the general idea uh, it was an editor I started working on for just doing, I don't know, sort of RPG, or that sort of thing um, it was okay, but unfortunately I had a hard drive crash and lost a good chunk of it after I got a lot further than this, believe me. Um, so I've just not done anything else further with it. But as I've found this sort of semi, very early version of it, and it, it does what people are asking for, I thought I'd show you. Um, basically that's setting up the screen at the start, not a lot really to explain there. Um, the scissor, I'm using that simply because uh, on different resolutions, different devices, you'll sometimes get borders, and that that just gets rid of them. Uh, I mean, for instance, if I go to set up, change this to 640 here, and then run it, it looks fine. If I take the set scissor mode out, that should give you borders. That's all I put the set scissor mode in for, just because I was working on Android as well. I didn't want borders on different resin, so I left that in. But let's just put that back to 960. Um, that's loading up your floor tiles image, uh, exactly the same as what I mentioned in my last tutorial. Just one image. Um, I can flick to it. There you go. That's the image. You can see I've got many t floor tiles on that. That's the actual size of the tile. Oh well, well no, they're bigger than that. Um, they're probably sort of mm, three by three there, perhaps now mm, two by two. I don't know. Grid size is different on this now since I've reloaded. But you can see it cuts those into tiles, and you've got a fair variety of different floors that you can use. Uh, if I can get back to the program, so it's loading that in. It's creating. A sprite out of it and it's setting the sprite anima animation 64 by 64 256 images very similar to what the last uh, tutorial was doing um, that's creating a sprite ready for the floor tiles and it's setting the, posi um, uh, the position and all that sort of thing fixing it to screen that I think if I just run it again I believe it's that one it's just just a display of what it is um, and then it moves out the way there right now the, 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 the um, look so I'm gonna gloss over most of this but it's been a long time since I've done it so I'm a bit hazy on some of it um, I'm dimensioning the full size map there as you can see I'm setting the limits to the map uh, as variables so you can use those when you're checking the scroll this automatically loads the map up when it first starts um, if there's a map to load that's why you check if it exists if it if it does then it'll open and read it and automatically load it up at the start um, this sets the default tile so basically all the tiles are going to be sand unless it's read up unless this file has existed already and then it uses that if it doesn't then it makes just a basic array with blank sand tiles um, 
Right, now that's it's grabbing map X and map Y is grabbing the end X that I've already set up here. That just we use that for the actual edges of the map. Uh, it set up the new grid limits, that's the actual size of the map on screen. Um, mm, 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 I don't know whether you really need to know too much about that. I don't think so. I'll come back to it if I if I notice anything. Right, main loop. Um, yeah, that's just basically doing. Instead of using VSync or anything like that, I've set the sync rate to zero, comma zero there, so I'll get the fastest speed, and then I'm just setting it to update it every. 60th of a second there. That's that's what that's doing. Like I say, this is quite old. Normally I just use Vsync v now, but actually you do get slightly better performance from doing this. Or well, it seems it. Seems it. Um, then that goes to the editor, which allows you to punk your tiles down. Uh, and that here, this this little bit of code is basically the code that controls a scroll. It's nice and simple. It's how I like it. Um, like I said, it's not the most efficient because it's gone through the entire loop. If you want it to be efficient, you just want to be checking the edges and repositioning them, but this does the lot. So it goes from start X to end X and start Y to end Y, which you've set up here. And that's basically just going through the little window size. Uh, we'll scroll back again, that's it. Uh, increases the count for the sprites. If it doesn't exist, and it creates the sprite or clones the sprite from the one I created initially. Um, and then it sets the sprite frame to the position in the array that you are and sets the sprite position up there. That's so you can scroll it across. Now all this this business here, um, I mean that the minus four it just so I could have a bit of it. It's, it's not starting at the start of the map it's it's basically just offsetting it a bit there so four and six was about right to get it sort of a bit of extra space around there um, offset is what you're changing uh, in here there you go offset equal offset plus one uh, and then scroll X that's also been changed in this bit here you'll you'll note the offset is the position in the array and the scroll is more the the, the smooth scroll position because if I run it again, when you're scrolling around the map, I'll keep dropping my pad. When you're scrolling around the map, you don't want to scroll around in, in chunks of the array because then it'd be going, you know, one tile at a tile exactly, like the old um, mud games and, and now roguelike type things, if you know what I mean. It just scrolls by the X and Y and just plops them in. Whereas this, the scroll X, is sort of an a, an intermediate point so you can scroll smoothly and then as soon as it gets to the full X grid um, it repositions the tiles uh, if I can explain it correctly it's hard to explain so basically as soon as scroll hash let's let's go to this you see scroll hash equals scroll hash plus two that's that's for your, your scroll speed and then if it equals 64 which is the sprite uh, if, well, if it's greater than 64 which is the grid size and the size of each sprite it then changes scroll to zero again and increases the start x and end x for the array where it's reading um, and it increases the offset as well which is all being used here um, so basically it, keep, it just moves the tiles nice and smoothly here as soon as it hits 64 it basically just re sets all the animation file frames of every tile so that they've sort of been pushed across one and then obviously it resets the scroll so it can carry on so just imagine it's sort of a push scroll etc as soon as you hit the, the grid size 64 it's moving all the images of the grid across one and then resetting the scroll so it can carry on again and do it again and it just rinse and repeat that's how it goes through um, and that's pretty much how it works. Um, the main loop there takes care of all the positioning of the sprites, and then obviously when you've got this control, um, all this lot affects the scroll and the offset and everything, and gets it to scroll nicely through all the entire map. 
and that's obviously just for when I want to plonk down sprites which isn't part of what this tutorial is about so I'm not going to really go all into the edit stuff I'll scroll through it so you can see it um, a bit slower that's saving the array at the end so this isn't really doing a lot besides let, letting you plonk your different sprouts on in a live fashion da, 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 scroll up the screen slowly slowly try to be slowly there you go but there we go you can see it works pretty well uh, like I say it's not the fastest you can detect a tiny bit of jutter occasionally because obviously every time it gets across 64 it's basically going right okay readjust all these sprites move them along in the array and then repaste them and it has to do that all in one fell swoop so occasionally it slows down slightly but you know you can get away with it for you know something like Zelda or Fantasy Star that sort of thing this would be fair you know be pretty acceptable and it just allows you to have absolutely huge maps I mean I think it's set to a thousand by a thousand uh, I should plump some squares on as I go you can see you can have huge maps and it doesn't run any, any slower no matter what size the map is up to a, a limit of course but I tested this out on Android and it run fine and dandy fine and dandy on my Android device and there you go you can see it's remembered all those cycle through those sprites there blop 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 nice graphics I've got them off the site for free stuff can't remember the name off the top of my head but uh, do a search around you'd soon find it it's one artist who did a lot of Amiga work I believe and this is up for an old Amiga RTS game that uh, never got finished so he decided to release the sprites for free um, but yep, that's basically scrolling, um, and that's what I mean about having a large array. I mean, let's say it sets up uh, a big array, or dimensionalise a huge one at the start, 1000 by 1000. I mean, I, I don't know whether I could actually increase that on the fly without breaking it. Um, no, well, I'm not going to mess around for now because, it, like I say, it's been a while since I worked on this code. And it's not the best of times to be messing around when you're actually recording. Um, you see, it's a big array, and you know, you can make it pretty much as big as you can get away with memory wise, and you could have absolutely humongous scrolling playing fields with this. So, I hope that helped. Uh, if it did, give it a like, or subscribe, or add it as a favourite, any of those. Um, and I'll uh, catch you next time.